A micromanipulator axis may begin to move gradually under its own weight even if it's not being touched. This phenomenon is referred to as mechanical drift and it occurs from normal use of the manipulator axes over time. Each course axis control of the micromanipulator has its own separate adjustment to counteract drift. So today we're looking at this popular M3301 micromanipulator, but the procedure we're using also works for an MD4, a Kite, and an MMJ micromanipulator. So before we start, this one here is the x-axis control, this one is the y-axis control, and this is the z-axis control. So for the X and the Y, you can see that there's a hex screw right here and here. And then for the Z axis, this is an adjustment ring in here, right here. And there's a screw right there for adjusting the Z axis. To start with the X axis, we're going to use the Allen key provided. And it fits right here into the screw hole there. Before we start, we're going to run this all the way out to give us as much room as possible. And we're going to take the Allen key and put it in that, that screw hole right there. We're going to loosen that up. Don't take it out because it's impossible to get back in. And then you're going to hold it here and twist this knob just a little bit till you feel it catch. The resistance of the knob begins to increase as it compresses against the spring steel and the nylon friction components inside. Adjustment's a little bit arbitrary, so when the amount of tension feels just about right, then you go ahead and tighten it up again. Tighten that thing up, and then you want to test it. You want to test the tension, and you're going to take it and push it. And just feel how much resistance it is there. It shouldn't move easily, but it is kind of arbitrary. And if it's not quite right, you may need to go back and try it again. Until you get it just exactly where you want it to be. It takes a little bit of patience. It may take two or three tries. And you're going to do the same thing with the Y action. If the X action feels too tight or too loose, then you unscrew it and you do it again. Typically the goal is to get the tension just tight enough to prevent the axis from drifting under its own weight while it's not loaded, but not any tighter than necessary to achieve that end. So the correct amount of tension often occurs within a narrow range of adjustment. If you make it too tight, the knob will be harder than necessary to turn and the frictional component will wear out faster. So, be patient and do it a couple times. The manipulator operated in a standard position with the electrode clamp located above the manipulator body. In that case, then the y-axis doesn't typically have a tendency to drift unless the manipulator body is tilted to the left or the right relative to the vertical plane. So, if the y-axis tension is performed with essentially the same technique that's described in the X, you're going to do it using you're going to do the same thing with the screw on the y-axis here. Adjusting the z-axis is a little different. The z-axis is notorious for drifting since it's subject to gravitational forces by the weight of the entire manipulator body and the load. So the tension is adjusted by rotating this adjustment ring here. And to do that, you need to put the small screwdriver in there. Loosen it up and then you can use the screwdriver to push the ring. It can be difficult to turn, but if you have the screwdriver perpendicular to the ring, then you can use the screwdriver to push it up. With older manipulators, the adjustment ring may be too tight to turn, even using the adjustment knob. If, if it becomes too hard to turn and you can't get it with the screwdriver, you have to take this whole piece off and be careful of all the bushings and the little nylon parts in there. They have to go back in the same order. And then you have direct access to manipulate it. I'm not going to do that today. So that's how you adjust drift on one of these axes. If you have any questions, just give us a call.